Greetings and welcome to No BS Baking. You got JP here. Today is going to be part two of my um, videos on dough conditioners and bread improvers. Today we're going to be talking about bleaching. So without further ado, let's get at it. For hundreds of years, bakers have come to the realization that if, after milling their wheat, they stored their flour for, for a time, the baking performance of the flour improved. Breads had better gas retention, they produced bigger volume, and they had nice lighter textures than those made with fresh milled or fresh ground flour. When flour is aged, oxidation restructures the protein, allowing the gluten to become stronger and more elastic. Although not used anymore in many places around the world, bleaching additives can still be found in many countries in the flour, in their bread and batter mixes, and of course in dough improvers. So let's talk about it and let's talk about bleaching agents. Bleaching agents started in the early 1900s as millers realized they could speed up the time significantly that flour needs to naturally oxidize. And thus, it was incorporated mostly for productivity reasons and the whitening effect it had on the flour. Bleaching additives were used extensively in many parts of the world until the 1990s, when researchers determined bleaching agents used in food products such as flour diminished the nutritional profile significantly and have been linked to cancer in laboratory experiments. So here I've listed some of the more common bleaching additives that are still used in some countries. Chances are good that if you see the name that contains bromate, peroxide, dioxide, or chlorine somewhere in the name, these are bleaching agents. As I mentioned, in many countries, some or all of these additives are banned and therefore millers and bakers have come full circle, relying on good old mother nature to do the job, albeit over a much longer time. Bleaching additives change numerous things in flour beyond just whitening, and depending on which bleaching additive is used and at what concentration determines the effect it will have on your dough or batter, and ultimately the finished product. Certain bleaching agents perform additional functions which may or may not be desirable in the particular product you are planning to make. Besides the US and a few other countries, most of us don't think too much about it as most additives used for bleaching uh, in ble bleaching flour are not permitted for use in our countries. Bleached flour is typically refined, meaning that the nutrient-rich bran and germ of the wheat kernel have been removed, stripping the grain of many of its valuable vitamins and minerals and leaving only endosperm. It basically has been phased out around the world um, since the 90s. Besides the obvious benefits of whiter and brighter flour color and the softening effect it imparts, there are some additional pluses bakers realize with some of these additives, such as additional oxidation benefits as it pertains to gluten strength and dough development. This of course is desirable in some products and less so in others, so the flour type, application pur purpose and pricing, profit objectives of the manufacturer often dictate the type of bleaching agent used. Here I've listed some of the pros of bleached flour solely from a baking performance standpoint, not necessarily from a health perspective. Now, I don't really want everyone to freak out if they find some type of bleaching or oxidizing agent in their flour or their, their bread mix or pancake mix or whatever. In most instances, they're added at levels that many researchers and government watchdogs consider safe in moderation. Always best to do your own research. If you live in a country where these are still used, make your own decision on seeking alternative baking mixes or ingredients or not. Seems like whatever and wherever you look these days, some new research group has come up with some new thing in our food, used in the growing process, manufacturing, or in the natural environment that's killing us. So as with most things we love, moderation is the key.
And in summary, learn to understand what's in your flour or in your baking mix or in your dough improver and especially take a look at your store-bought bakery items. You can make everything from unbleached flour with a little tweaking. You know, if you're accustomed to using bleached flours, you don't need to, it's not a big, huge learning curve to move out of it. You'll have some minor things to adjust. All um, can, be, um, can be done quite easily uh, just by understanding uh, your flour a little bit more. If you're in a country that sells bleached flour on the mainstream, then check the label, do your research if you're concerned, and if so, start looking for alternatives that meet your health, lifestyle, and budget goals. And don't be surprised to find these in places you never imagined. You know, you pick up that bakery item from, the, from your grocer and all of a sudden you'll start seeing some of these things in here, especially if you're living in um, countries that still allow the use of some or all of these. So always, always, always check your label. And I welcome everybody to continue the exploration of dough conditioners and dough improvers as we move into the next segment coming up here shortly which will be about um, enzymes. So until then, we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, please give me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out as I'm getting this channel going here. And be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have sitting right over here. Uh, we'll see you next time. No BS breaking.